Putin is not Russia. Russia is us. That's what I was saying to my Russian friends, to the people from Russia. And today we're gonna talk about Navalny, his death, and the death murder of another Russian uh, famous politician Boris Nemtsov, how Putin killed them both, about funeral of Navalny and what it means for us, and about Russian people, how they feel about it, and what is going on in Russia. Also, I will say a few words about so-called Christian values of Putin and Russia, and about Navalny's mother and how she was treated, and the main thing about new attack on Ukraine, and we will talk about attack on Odessa a little bit as well. This is what this video is gonna be about. Hello everyone, I'm Elina, welcome back to my channel Enough of Propaganda. Please like, subscribe, share, write comments. Let's make truth available for everyone. This is what helps to promote it on YouTube. Thank you. I have a separate video about murder of Alexei Navalny, Russian oppositional leader. And um, today I will talk about more about his funeral and what happened with his body. Just a little bit, I don't think. It's what it represents is the most important for us at this moment. I wasn't personally acquainted with Navalny, I'm not from Navalny team. That is why I'm not gonna talk about him as a person all that much. Besides that he was a brave man who fought for freedom of Russia against and against Putin's regime. That's why he was murdered. And yes, he did the mistakes in the past, but he was man enough and intelligent person enough to realize these mistakes and fix them and say he was wrong. Apologize to Georgian uh, leader Mikhail Saakashvili, for example, and apologize for what he said in the past about Ukraine. But this is not what we're gonna talk about today. And there is another video I want to show you, which you can watch and find out more about Navalny. In this video on the channel of Maxim Katz, another Russian politician. And uh, Maxim Katz made several videos about Navalny. This one is has English subtitles and you will find out about Navalny what you want to know. You may agree with Maxim Katz, or you may disagree. Maxim Katz really knew Navalny himself and started to work in for Navalny team in the past and that's how his political career started. So you're welcome to watch that. This is a post from TV Rain and according to the calculations of the White Counter Project, about 16 and a half thousand people walked from Thus my sorrows church in Marina, it's a district of Moscow, to the Borisov Cemetery on foot. That many people, and this is only the people who walk through the bridge, I'll show you the map in a second, in the first day took part in the funeral of Navalny, because the next day people will still keep coming to his grave. This is where the church is, and this is where the cemetery is, and there is a bridge across Moscow River, so it's about two kilometers or so, 28 minute walk, but it took very long time, lots of people showed up, as I said, thousands of people, and they were walking and standing and walking in this line all day long yesterday, all evening long, and today as well. The next day after funeral, people still keep coming to Navalny's grave to say goodbye. This is post with the poetry of famous Russian poet Anna Akhmatova. And where mother stood silently, no one dared to look, from her poem Requiem. And this is Navalny's mother, and during the funeral, that woman had to endure horrible treatment from the Russian government, and personally, Putin is responsible for that. As I said in my previous video, he's not only killed Navalny, he was responsible for him being in jail. Navalny was falsely imprisoned under false pretenses and thrown into high security jail inside the high security jail with the murderers committed several murders, not just one, with the real criminals who actually deserve to be there. And again, not maybe, maybe not all of them deserve to be there because there are about 400,000 Russian people imprisoned falsely 
for the wrong reasons and they are not guilty. Somebody got beat up and tortured and they admitted and something, but we're not talking about this just now. We're talking about how Navalny get in jail in the first place. He was tortured, imprisoned, and then in the end sent into Arctic penal colony, somewhere nowhere where nobody could get into, and eventually he mysteriously died. Putin killed Navalny, and Putin killed Nemtsov, Russian politician who was against Putin and who was a hope for Russia. He was killed right in downtown Moscow, and I'll talk about him a little bit later. But the point is, no matter what Navalny did, Navalny did not kill anyone. But even if he would have, what kind of piece of garbage torturing Navalny's mother and his family, his parents, both his parents, his mother and his lawyer showed up in the, that penal colony finally. She was tortured, she wasn't allowed even to see the body of her son for a long time. And eventually they started to talk to her and show her the dead body of her son and started to torture her and by even not allow the lawyers present, questioning her in the room for hours and hours, trying to pressure on her so she had a quiet funeral and not allow anybody to say goodbye to her son. Or they said, well, the time is working against you, the body is decomposing, we will just bury him here, nowhere in the Arctic penal colony, so nobody can be able to see his grave. So you either agree on a quiet funeral, or else, or we just didn't give you your son's body. No matter what Navalny would have done, his mother did nothing. She did nothing wrong, and in Christian religion in Russia, body have to be buried within several, like, couple days, within three days. And Navalny's body, his mother couldn't even receive for a long time, let alone to have a burial. But eventually she did receive her son's body. Practically for two weeks he couldn't be buried. And when they started to, they brought actually his body finally into Moscow, to his home, basically, it was a torture again that they couldn't find a place, a hole where they could say goodbye to him or a church. They couldn't find the cemetery because everybody openly saying in the face of the family that no, we can't bury him. No, we can't do that. Oh no, you can't have a memorial service with him here. It was a hard time when the whole team of Navalny was trying to find a way to actually give the guy a proper burial. Russia is not a Christian country. Putin is not Christian. Putin is FSB agent who former KGB agent. Their duty was actively fight religion, destroy religion, kill priests, and actively destroy Russian religion in the Soviet Union. So anybody in any foreign country who dare to say anything about Putin as a Christian is an insult to any Russian person or any Christian person in this world. And the torture of Navalny's mother is another proof of that. And in the church, eventually they had a service for him, which was rushed by the priest because he was afraid for his life. And they didn't even let many people come to the casket and say goodbye, which is in Russian Christian traditions. They just closed the casket and nailed it until it's gonna be moved to the cemetery, which again, only few people could come. And people were crying and saying, let us say goodbye. They, their voices wasn't heard by the authorities. This is what Putin was afraid of. They was afraid of Navalny's funeral will turn into a funeral kind of like Russian academic Sakharov, the dissident, was died during Soviet times. It was, seems like direct analogy. And after that was change of power in the country. That's what Putin is afraid of. That's why he's so afraid of Navalny. Putin even afraid to say a name of Navalny, let alone give him proper burial. During the conversations for hours, which was for hours going on between Navalny's mother and the pressure from the colony, people in the colony where Navalny was held, during that time, they several times left the room and would talk to the phone to somebody because they couldn't do it on their own. 
everything about Navalny was directed from the very top, from personally Putin. That is why Navalny was Putin's personal prisoner. And yet, a lot of people came to say goodbye to Navalny. This is how many people, since the beginning of the war and since the previous protests in the past, there wasn't that many people on the streets and people felt encouraged and brave. These are brave people who came. If you want to appreciate the real level of heroism of the people who came to the funeral of Alexei Navalny yesterday, imagine that in 1942, after the massacre of political opponent, tens of thousands of people took to the streets of Berlin chanting Hitler is a murderer, Jews good people, no to war, and bring the soldiers home. Adjusted for the fact that Putin's propaganda apparatus is many times more powerful than the one that was available to, her, to Goebbels and his repressive apparatus is much better technically equipped. <laughs> Moscow, 1st of March 2024. Ukrainians are good people. <laughs> no to war. <laughs> Return soldiers home. They are yelling Alexei, that's the first name of Navalny. These people for those two weeks were threatened, literally threatened by Russian government. So if they showed up, anybody who is a, a certain age, they would be given uh, the draft letters to go to Russian army and they will be sent not just somewhere as Russia pretends sometimes, oh, you're not gonna go to real war, you're gonna be guarding some storage facility or something. No, they were told that they can be sent in places like Avdiivka, where over 50,000 Russians already were dead in the meat grinder, literally into meat grinder. These people, they were told this is what's going to happen to them. And they were threatened in many other ways not to come to this funeral. And yet they came. <laughs> I won't show you too much of faces of people, but you can see they have different, they are different ages and what they are saying, you wasn't afraid and we are not afraid either. No to war. Russia will be free. Love is stronger than fear. There are also people who are saying no to war. On March 1st, the whole day people were coming until deep at night, even after the almost funeral uh, cemetery was, clo was closed, but people were still coming. They buried their leader Navalny. They said we covered him with flowers so he didn't feel cold. As I said, people of different ages came and this woman was saying that we, I just want to live long enough to see our freedom. And this man is saying that for seven hours he felt like he's in a different country. He also felt free. Despite the fact that many people like this woman saying that uh, she very he felt very free when she could yell Russia will be free and attend the funeral of Navalny. They are not free and they all gonna pay for this. They were not free. Several of them were already arrested at the time, which is about 100 people across the country. Not only Moscow was saying farewell to Navalny. According to Igor Sushko, hundreds if not thousands of attendees will be arrested in the coming week. Putin's enforcers in plain clothes were spotted at the Moscow funeral for Alexei Navalny, assassinated by Putin. They took photographs, including from this window of a cafe overlooking the procession. So, Putin will come for these people. If you're one of them, either leave Russia or be ready to fight for your life. Of course, the wife and the children of Navalny couldn't come to Russia because they would be arrested. But this is their mothers, mother of Alexei Navalny and mother of his wife, Yulia Navalny. They came to the graveyard next morning 
again. And people still coming and still hugging them and telling them the words of support. And I'm sending them my love and my support and my deeply deep condolences for the death of their son and for the death of Russian oppositional leader. And the next morning they were still coming. Many Russians commenting that Putin didn't turn us into zombies. We will be free. And this is how it was looked like in the morning and Navalny team reported that people will still ca keep coming. Somebody even brought the, the legendary duck which uh, became a symbol of anti-corruption protest after the Navalny team published uh, investigation about former Russian uh, president Dmitry Medvedev in 2017. Right before Navalny was killed, he was supposed to be exchanged with the foreign countries, uh, with Germany for example, uh, supposed to be exchange of the prisoners. Navalny, uh, probably Willen and Gershkovich, American citizens, and um, Gershkovich is an American journalist and so on. This post of TV Rain, uh, where the Bellingcat investigator Christa Grozev gave the interview and talked about it. It's confirmed by Navalny team that such exchange was prepared, and right before that Navalny get killed. Uh, according to Mr. Grozev, Putin may continue killing political prisoners and opposition figures, since there are no red lines left for him. That's what said Christo Grozev. The problem with exchange of Navalny was that Vadim Krasikov, the officer of FSB who called the killer on the bicycle, who killed uh, a man in Germany, he was sentenced and he is serving the time life sentence in Germany. And Germany wasn't intent to exchange him on anyone. But when the offer that they, he could be exchanged on Navalny and a few other people, Germany started to think, well, maybe. So for Putin, uh, it's very important that Germany moved on that position. Putin really want his officer back. There are two things in this I want to say, which is a horrible thing to say, but this is the truth how it is, and I agree on that uh, with Russian uh, journalist and politician, uh, not politician, but journalist and blogger Michael Naki, that unfortunately, this is a really, really bad situation. From one side, the people who are still in the hands of Putin, like Vladimir Karamurza, Ilya Yashin, and many Russian politicians, and people who stand up against Putin's regime, even Americans like journalist Gershkovich, who was arrested as a bargaining chip for no reason whatsoever, as much as not no reason as well as like Navalny, they are in danger. On the other hand, if the exchange of Vadim Krasikov, FSB officer who killed the person in Germany, politically, it was political assassination what he did, it will make things worse. Because now Putin decided, okay, we will get rid of Navalny and the exchange will still continue. It will still go on. We will just give them somebody else. The point is that Willen and Gershkovich are Americans and FSB officer in the hands of Germany. The only because of Navalny this deal even was discussed. And it was agreed upon. The problem is the more we will bend to Putin and exchange these people, the worse is gonna get. Putin will grab more and more people to use them as bargaining chip. If you're a foreigner and thinking about going to Russia, don't do it. It does not matter what you did, it does not matter who you are, you will be, if you're a foreign citizen, you will be used as a bargaining chip. You'll be arrested on the false pretenses like that stupid American woman who just went there just because she's a dual citizen, dual citizen, and I'm a dual citizen as well, and I know that Russia signed agreements with, about dual citizenship with very few countries. In the United States or Canada or any European countries are not one of them. So for Russians, it doesn't matter how many citizenships you have, you are Russian. And your foreign, foreign like American embassy can do nothing about it. So they right now arrested dual citizen, a woman, American, and Russian 
just because they said they found in her telephone she donated $51 to Ukraine. They might find it in her telephone, they may not. They will invent anything to arrest her because they need bargaining chips. This is all. So unfortunately, if we will go exchange Krasikov on the people who is already arrested, but not Navalny since Navalny is dead, it will only make Putin more brave. And another bad thing is why Putin wants his officer so badly. Because he wants to do more of these political assassinations in other countries. And getting this guy back will send the message to everybody else. Do it for me and I'll exchange you. I'll do everything to take you out. To get you out. Even if you get caught. This is the message Putin trying to send. So there would be more political assassinations in some other countries. This is my opinion. You're welcome to disagree with it, but this is how it is. I'm very sorry to the people who are in Russian jail. I really care about Karamurza and Nava and Yashin and uh, Skachelenka and many other people, Gorenov. But exchange, bargaining chips, it will only make Putin bolder and more of the people will get arrested and use these chips. Other countries responded on the death of Navalny as well. This is what projecting on the Russian embassy building in Buenos Aires. This is Navalny and his wife. Putin and his corrupt regime will not break us. This is the post of the insider in memory of uh, Russian politicians Boris Nemtsov and Alexei Navalny. The same day, the difference is nine years in between. On the 1st of March 2015 in downtown Moscow, the funeral and march in the memory of a Russian politician Boris Nemtsov, who was killed on 27th of February 2015. 1st of March 2024, thousands of people in Moscow came to say goodbye to Alexei Navalny, who was killed in a prison of, on 16th of February 2024. These are two politicians together, Navalny talking to Nemtsov and so on. I'll give the link to this video. This is what Boris Nemtsov said about Putin and his regime. He said Putin will be hated like Hitler. And this is the one day before his death on 26th of February 2015. Все на тотальном обмане построено. Такого не было никогда в истории современной России. Все это в одночасье, я подчеркиваю, в одночасье развернется на 180 градусов, так же, как разворачивается на 180 градусов тотальное любое вранье. Вот в 30-е годы все были, немецкий народ был очарован Гитлером, да? А сейчас Гитлера все ненавидят. Вот ровно то же самое будет с Путиным. Просто ровно то же самое, один в один. А сколько вил, особняков, усадеб, охотничьих домов у распоряжения господина Путина находится? Всего, всего 20, так. один из них за миллиард долларов в Геленджике, вот. но построено за годы его правления для себя любимого дополнительно 10. Путин совершает одну гигантскую ошибку. Он почему-то полагает, что на лжи, обмане и цинизме можно построить страну и ей править. Это полная чушь. Вот это полная чушь. Вот, понимаете, вот как вот на дерьме нельзя построить дом, чтобы он устойчиво стоял, так же на жестокости, цинизме, обмане и лжи нельзя построить государство. Никогда у него ничего не получится. В 90-е годы Путин, дружа с олигархами, помогал укреплению олигархического капитализма, а я с ним боролся. Да? Поэтому, когда нам рассказывают про то, что он спас, и от кого он спас, это вот все тотальное вранье. С помощью Березовского стал президентом, вот, потом со своими дружками разграбил крупнейшие наши корпорации, включая «Газпром», включая «Роснефть», э, расправу над Ходорковским и так далее. Вот. А золотились они, конечно, по полной программе, и сейчас боятся, что их посадят. Вот, собственно, в чем вся проблема. Значит, э, нам удалось удержать Россию при 10 долларах за баррель. Сейчас 120 в 12 раз дороже стала нефть. Сейчас обезьяну в Кремль посади, орангутанга, олигофрена, любого посади, медведя, зайца, мне все равно кого, жирафа туда посади. Ничего со с Россией не произойдет. При таком бронзбойте из нефти долларов, который падает сейчас на Россию, любой справится. Любой справится. Но воровство, коррупция, бюрократизация, рост чиновного аппарата на миллион человек гигантская бедность там везде за пределами Москвы, да? отсутствие дорог, отсутствие вообще развития какого-то инфраструктуры, сырьевая зависимость, разваливающиеся вооруженные силы, здравоохранение, где нельзя получить помощь, деградация образования. Вот все его итоги.
I agree with Nemtsov, most of it he said in 2015 and some of it in 2012. And Russia is still the same. Outside of Moscow, it's poverty and 6 million people doesn't have a warm toilet inside their apartment building, or apartment or a house. Meanwhile, Russia is not only killing Russian oppositional leader and so on. Even worse, they keep killing Ukrainians. And they will keep killing them. Because this is what they say they're gonna do and that's exactly what they're doing. A Russian drone completely destroyed the entrance to a nine-story building in Odessa. All 18 apartments were destroyed. Four dead, including three-year-old child. And another 12 people, including four children, might be under the rubble. This is how it looks like. This is Ukrainian boy Mark who was about to turn three. He was killed yesterday together with his dad in a Russian suicide drone strike against the apartment building in Odessa. His mom survived but very wounded, severely wounded. All Russian war criminals must be prosecuted. I won't show you the picture of the ch dead child, but you can see it if you want. It's need to be seen. It's too bad that YouTube doesn't allow many of these things because this is what Russia is doing in Ukraine right now. This is what Russia was doing in Ukraine since 2014, for 10 years. This is the post of Russian chess master Gary Kasparov. Every damn day. And the richest, freest, most comfortable, most powerful people and nations in the world watch Ukrainians die for freedom, die to keep Russia war from their soldiers and borders. Full support could end this quickly and chart a course for the free world. And Ukraine is not the end. Now Russian war criminal Lavrov threatened Moldovan regime over Transnistra. He compares Moldova with Ukraine and saying the situation is identical. Uh, по стопам киевского режима, отменяя все русское, дискриминируя русский язык во всех сферах и вместе с украинцами еще устраивая серьезное экономическое давление на Приднестровье. This is all a lie. Russia attacked Ukraine. Russia attacked Moldova and created a problem in there which never was there before. I can tell you how many people in Crimea before Russia attacked it was worried about Russian language. It was a poll done in 2011 and in 2013. So in 2013, before Russia attacked Crimea, it was 4%. I was thinking uh, Russian language is a problem. And personally, 6% said for them personally it's a problem. So there was no problem with Russian language. And do you know how many Russian schools has Ukrainian language in it? There are a lot of Ukrainians living in Russia. I have Ukrainian descent. I never had a choice to study Ukrainian. And neither did everybody else. I don't know how many schools in Russia actually study Ukrainian. Right now probably zero. And most likely before was zero. I have never heard that in Russia there were schools which study Ukrainian language. So what, we now have rights to attack Russia, Mr. Lavrov? Lavrov met with the foreign minister of Slovakia and Hungary. This meeting, according to Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico, is an example of balanced and sovereign Slovak foreign policy. Well, maybe he should look at the picture of the dead child then. This little bureaucrat, who isn't even a president of the United States, Mike Johnson, holding hostages not only United States, Ukraine, Russian people, and basically the whole world just by not scheduling the vote on the aid of Ukraine from the United States. Because of that, these people just died. Because of that, Ukraine had to leave Avdivka. Because Russians throw in at Ukrainians meat waves attacks, and Ukraine simply doesn't have enough ammunition to do so. Back in the day, a nutcase calling himself Moses 
would be locked up in a loony bin together with Hitler, Napoleon and Stalin. And now he is a Speaker of House of Representatives of the United States. Something wrong with this. So next time Americans think before you vote. Meanwhile, majority of American people of both parties support Ukraine. This is a current time posted about New York meeting in support of Ukraine. And the people who took part in this action was uh, also families of uh, volunteers from the United States who fought in Ukraine on the side of Ukraine. Their mothers demanded from the Congress to give more support to Ukraine. Bravo Americans! The day will come and Putin will be arrested. This is New York. And this is the message what Navalny sent to Russians and to all of us. Don't give up. Thank you for, your, for watching my video. Please help Ukraine. Please tell your politicians to give Ukraine all the aid Ukraine needs. Thank you and have a great day. Learn the truth and stay informed. See you later. Russia will be free.